Today, incidentally, would have been the 100th birthday of the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen's husband. As we know, the Duke died in April this year, but memories of his charitable works remain evergreen, one of them being the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Scheme. Prince Philip's son, Prince Edward, the Duke of Wessex, has been speaking with Channel Television's London correspondent, Julian Olaika, about the importance of retaining his father's legacy of championing the potential Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Scheme. Today, on the anniversary of the Duke's birthday, the Founders 100th Initiative is being launched with an ambition of raising £25 million to sustain Prince Philip's vision. The award is calling on educators, parents, community business leaders and ultimately young people from around the world to discover the potential impact of non-formal education. Your Royal Highness, it is a huge honour and a privilege to be speaking with you today to mark a very special occasion which should have been the 100th birthday of your father, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. Through the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, a new campaign is being launched to celebrate your father's legacy. What inspired the Founders 100 initiative, sir? And what are the team aiming to achieve over the next three years? Well, I think that the fact that uh, it was going to be his centenary this year, I think, was, was really the, the, the main focus. And for the, for the award that bears his title, I think we, we all realised that it was an important milestone to... Uh, to to recognise and remember, and um, and it was uh, uh, so. We, we've been sort of thinking about this for a while, but we always knew that there was, you know, we, we were going to have to be uh, very flexible in in our approach. But um, it was a, and I, but I think you know, that given that the the extraordinary outpouring of of, uh, of memories and and uh, of, of of just recognition of the impact of the award in so many different countries is sort of. I think sort of, sort of said that you know that we were we were going down the the, the right route. That there are plenty of people that, are, that have been involved in the award. And it's had a really positive impact, and, and we'd like to be able to to mark his century, but, but also celebrate the impact of the award around the world. Over thirty thousand young Nigerians have greatly benefited from the Duke of Edinburgh International Award Scheme, known locally as the International Award for Young People Nigeria. You were fortunate enough to visit Nigeria before the global lockdown. Sir, can you please recall your experience and were you impressed at the commitment and drive of these young participants? I was indeed. Yes, it was a it was a very uh, uh, um, it was a, a, a sort of a happy by chance that we were able to to do that. And and uh, you're right, it was it was one of the last trips I think I made before uh, before lockdown. So it was a um, um, so it was it was a wonderful opportunity to meet uh, lots of young people in in lots of different places and also to to try to uh, and I, it was it was what was really encouraging was not just that the, the young people involved and the adults, but there was a there was a there was a real genuine interest from um, lots of sectors of society community who were really interested by what the award and what non-formal education could really do in, in in Nigeria for so many more young people, and, and that, that that you know that there was a, there was a real that, that it could be uh, you know positively advantageous for, for lots of young people, um, and, and so we we had a very um, yeah, we, would, we, we had a very um, a good hearing, at least, when we were out there and, and, uh, and, and had some very good conversations. Um, and, I, and I'm guessing that, that hopefully, you know, what was started then has probably paused a little bit, but hopefully we'll be able to pick this up in, as, as, as the recovery um, comes through. And, and hopefully the award can play its part in terms of the recovery in, in Nigeria. Absolutely. Uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's passing provoked a huge sense of mourning across the world including of course in Africa. How will the Duke of Edinburgh award retain His Royal Highness's legacy and evolve with the changing dynamics of the world post-pandemic? That's a, that's a very good question. I mean luckily that the, the way that my father sort of set it up and, and the vision and the values and the ethos he, he, he instilled in the award from the beginning um, I, I, is very much as relevant today as, as, as it was in the, in the past. It was very much one, that it should be open to all. That's above all the most important thing. Um, so there's no discrimination in who can take part. Um, and, you know, it's, it's fantastic seeing the diversity of the young people who do get involved and, the, and where they get involved, their circumstances, their backgrounds. And, and, uh, and so that, that's the, fine enough, it's the biggest challenge uh, for, for anybody running the award is, is that there, there aren't, in sense, there should be no barriers there. And one of the things we really want to do through this campaign is to make sure that, um, that those, any 
barriers to access and, and particularly affordability are, are, are broken down or removed if, if we possibly can, because I think that's really important to, to sustaining his vision for what it was. But the other part of it is really about, I mean, he, well, he was a wonderful, I mean, he, he, he really enjoyed inspiring both young people and adults. And, and the award was a framework for them to be able to, to, to fulfill their goals and their dreams. And it's that, that, that is the, the, the clever trick about it. It's the empowering bit. It's about the fact that, that young people get to set their own goals and, and choose what it is they want to do. And the adults are just there guiding and shaping, and, but ultimately allowing young people to take responsibility for their own actions and, and, and to take it forward. And, and I think that's a, this is a really, really important life lesson in, in there. And, and, and I think that's why you get such a fantastic range of young people, both getting what they get out of it, but, but also that, that transformation for lots of young people and, and where it takes them in the future. So in that sense, I, I can't see it's necessarily we don't need to change. That's the brilliant thing. We don't need to change anything. It, it, it works because young people are reinventing the award because it's their goals. It's not ours. It's what, it's what they want to try to do. And, and our job is to try to help them do it. Yes. Uh, so, so how can Nigerians get behind the Founders 100 initiative, uh, both as fundraisers and recipients? Um, well, certainly, I mean, as, 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 well, in terms of fundraising, what we're hoping to do is to, to launch a, a Challenge 100. Um, so this is for, for anybody who wants to have a go, do something uh, with the theme of 100 in it, and, and, and hopefully to, to generate some, some income from that, um, whether through sponsorship or, or however. Um, and all of that will, 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 will go towards the, um, uh, the Founders Fund, um, which, would be, which would be amazing if we get you know, lots of Either both. I mean, they, this could be anybody. This, 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 this could be people that are doing the award now. This could be people who've done the award. The volunteers. It might be people who wish they rather had done the award. This is their chance to do something, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, and to, to, to be able to get involved. And hopefully that will just help in and, and everything else that we're trying to do with Founders One Hundred, just to raise that profile, um, and particularly the really trying to to to, to try to encourage more. Um, in a sense, community leaders, business leaders, political leaders, to understand the values, the positive values of, of non-formal education, what happens and what happens outside the classroom. Because if we can if we can get that recognized, if we can get the understanding of how we actually develop those skills, which are so vital in terms of developing young people, both as as, as employees but also as entrepreneurs, people that are willing to take risks and, and do things, then 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 hopefully parents and teachers and youth workers and others will, will, will realize that this is something that is is positive it's not a distraction actually can really genuinely help the young people that they're working with and, and they look after and and we all know that if those young people just give them that little opportunity you know, they will seize that and 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 you will watch that their potential grow and 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 that potential for what you know is is limitless is infinite and, and that's what we really want to try to do is more young people to discover that 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 infinite potential they have to to do amazing things sir thank you very much for your time well thank you very much for your interest Juliana, and, uh, and, and uh, I hope very much that, uh, that as a result of, of the Founders 100, many more uh, young Nigerians will be able to take part in the award. That would be the most fantastic memorial and legacy to my father.